الحمد لله الذي يجيبني حين أناديه ويستر علي كل عورة وأنا أعصيه ويعظم النعمة علي فلا أجازيه نحمده ونسبحه ونقدسه على آلائه ونعمائه ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له إلها واحدا أحدا فردا صمدا قيوما نؤمن له بالربوبية ونقر له بالعبودية من يهدي الله فهو المهتدي ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا ونشهد أن سيدنا محمدا عبده ورسوله أرسله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك وترحم على محمد وآل محمد كأفضل ما صليت وسلمت وباركت وترحمت على إبراهيم وآل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد وصل اللهم وسلم على جميع الأنبياء والمرسلين والأوصياء والصديقين وعثرة نبيك الطيبين الطاهرين المقصومين والخلص من أصحابه المنتجبين عباد الله أوصي نفسي وأوصيكم بتقوى الله ولزوم أمره قال ربنا العزيز في قرآنه الكريم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ولئن أذقنا الإنسان منا رحمة ثم نزعناها منه إنه ليأوس كفور ولئن أذقناه نعماء بعد ضراء مسته ليقولن ذهب السيئات عني إنه لفرح فخور إلا الذين صبروا وعملوا الصالحات أولئك لهم مغفرة وأجر كريم صدق الله العلي العظيم The best one to describes us humans is our creator is the Lord who shaped us خلقنا الإنسان في أحسن تقويم and he modeled us and he delivered us he is the one he is the best one to depict and portray us and describes our secrets and describe our soul and our tendencies and our characters in this verse in surah hud in this verse, Allah says, man sways and swings between two types of moods and two types of feelings. On the one hand, وَلَئِنْ أَذَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ مِنَّا رَحْمَةً If we give him the taste of our mercy and our blessing, if we allow him to taste that for some period of time, so he lives in affluence, he lives in happiness and prosperity, then we try to take it out from him. Take this out of, of him. We withdraw this affluence and this prosperity from him. In Nahu he becomes, verily he becomes, Ya'usun kafur, despondent and disturbed, despondent, ya'us. Kafur, even he becomes blasphemous, he rejects God, he becomes ungrateful to God. Innahu la ya'usun kafur. On the other hand, wala in adaqnahu na'ma, but if we allow him to taste affluence, prosperity. After after affliction and adversity befalls him, here he becomes proud of himself. He says, all the evil has departed me. I'm okay now. I'm healthy. 
and back to my strength, my ghurur, my pride, my exaltation. Innahu, innahu la farihun fakhur. Farih, though farah is joy, but here it's negative. It's not the positive joy. There is some positive joy which is, which is acceptable. But this is, this farah here is not joy, it's exaltation. Meaning, this is a negative joy, and a joy that is blended and mixed with a pride, with arrogance. He says, nothing can befall me anymore. I am powerful. I am healthy. I am safe. No wrong, no evil shall befall me. No one can hurt me. I am so immune against everything. In Nahu, the Farihon, verily he becomes exalted. Fakhur, boastful. Farihon Fakhur. So, these are the two modes of us, the human beings. At the time of affliction, we lose hope. We become hopeless. We become despondent, yaus. We see no light at the end of the tunnel. We think this is the end of our life. We become very gloomy, very pessimistic, very downhearted, and we find no solution. And we don't even remember that there is God who's seeing and watching and observing. At the time of success, when we make some money, when God is testing us with success for some period of time, again, we forget about God. In this case, we say to God, we don't need you. We don't need to pray. Why should I pray? I pray when I need God. In this case, I have everything. I don't need to pray. I don't need to remember God. إِنَّهُ لَفَرِحٌ exultant, فَخُورٌ boastful of his own achievements. This is me. What happened to me, all this success and achievements, this is me, not God. It has nothing to do with God. These are the two, two feelings, two radical feelings of the human beings. God says, only one type of people who are safe. إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا إِلَّا الَّذِينَ صَبَرُوا Save those who are patient. They have patience. And patient is a very deep meaning. It's a very rich terminology, patience. Patience entails many good qualities. Not just one quality. In patience and sabr, you find many good qualities. إِلَّا الَّذِينَ صَبَرُوا إِلَّا الَّذِينَ صَبَرُوا Save those who are patient, show patience and constancy. إِلَّا الَّذِينَ صَبَرُوا And they perform righteous deeds. So patience is a feeling. Righteous deeds are actions. And we need both. We need the feeling and we need the actions too. إِلَّا الَّذِينَ صَبَرُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ Those are the ones who are not going to swing between these two radical feelings. Neither are they going to exult and become boastful at the time of success, nor are they going to lose hope at the time of failure and test. إِلَّا الَّذِينَ صَبَرُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ أُولَئِكَ لَهُمْ مَخْفِرَةٌ وَأَجْرٌ the Holy Quran says, at the time of success, be thankful. Always remember God first. Whenever God bestows anything on you, bestows family, children, health, wealth, safety and security, remember God. Remember God. Remember Him at the time of success. And also at the time of affliction, mihna, musibah, when there is affliction, when there is a test, when there is some loss, at, this, at that time do not lose hope in God. Don't destroy the spirit 
of hope in you and trust in God. Say, God is there. Whatever is befalling me is under his eyes, under his watch. He's seeing, he's knowing, he knows what is happening to me. Maybe he's testing, he's testing my faith. Don't lose hope in him and don't lose confidence and trust in your Lord. Neither, my friends, affluence and prosperity should deceive us in this life and makes us feel that we are self-sufficient. We are in no need to God. We don't need God. We don't need to pray as long as I'm okay. Some people think that the prayer is only for someone who's in trouble, someone who's sick, someone who's hungry, someone who's poor. But if he's okay, then he doesn't need to pray. This is wrong. Neither affluence should make us arrogant, nor affliction should make us hopeless and despondent. Yahus. Both are wrong. We have to be normal. We have to put our trust in God every day. Whether that day we consider a day of success or day of failure. We should pray to God and ask Him help every single day. At the peak of your success or when you feel you are low, when you feel you are at loss. In both days, in both conditions, we have to remember Allah illa ladina sabaru. al yasu min rahmatillah min al dhunub al kabira One of the cardinal sins is to give up on God's mercy. And there are several verses in the Quran that speaks about not being despondent. One of them in Surah Yusuf, إِنَّهُ لَا يَيْأَسُ مِنْ رَوْحِ اللَّهِ إِلَّا الْقَوْمُ الْكَافِرُونَ No one should give up on God's mercy and become despaired and despondent unless he doesn't believe in God. If he does not believe in God, that's a different issue. But those who have faith in God and believe in God's existence, they should not give up on his mercy. The second verse in Surah Al-Ankabut, وَالَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا بِآيَاتِ اللَّهِ وَلِقَائِهِ Those who distrust are distrustful. They have distrust in God. They don't have a trust in Him. They don't have belief in His existence. Neither they believe they're going to meet Him on the Day of Judgment. وَالَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا بِلِقَاءِ اللَّهِ كَفَرُوا بِآيَاتِ اللَّهِ وَلِقَائِهِ those people are going to be despondent. Those going to be despair. Those such people lose hope. There is a hadith, a saying of the Prophet ﷺ, which is very amazing. Very, very amazing. And the hadith says, this hadith gives hope to all of us. When you listen to this hadith, you should never hesitate. You should never suspect one day that God is not going to forgive you if you are sincere in your repentance. The Prophet ﷺ says, الفاجر الراجي لرحمة الله تعالى أقرب منها من العابد القانط الفاجر Fajr is someone who's licentious, someone who's immoral, someone who's indecent. Fajr. Al Fajr al Raji li rahmatillah. Someone who's unchaste, but at the same time, at the same time, he's a sinner, but he believes that God is merciful. One day God is going to save him. Maybe now he doesn't pray to God, but in Deep down in his heart, he knows God is merciful and God is forgiving. And he does not disconnect completely with God. He has tamak. He has hope in God's forgiveness and mercy. That person, that person, though, though he's not practicing Islam, that person, the Prophet says, Aqrabu minha, he's closer to God's mercy than the one who worship, but he has no hope in God's mercy. There are some people who do worship, 
They do worship, but they are always pessimistic, always gloomy, always dark, always complaining. Always they say, God is never, he never listens to me. He, li he listens to everybody else except me. God does not pay attention to me. Where is God's mercy? He, he prays five times a day, but he does not have faith in God's mercy. He doesn't have faith. This is al-anat. Anat means despondent. He doesn't believe God is merciful. Always complaining. Always. He says, I know. God, he hates me. He wants to destroy me. See, he's not listening to me. He's listening to my neighbor, to my friend, to my brother and sister. Accept me. When my turn comes, he closes his ears. Because he hates me. This is anat. This is despondent. For such person, his worshipping does not work. And yes, if you believe God does not believe, listen to you, he would not listen to you. God says, it depends on you. If you have faith in me, I will have faith in you. And I will listen to you. But if you think I'm not listening to you, I'm careless, and you become despondent, and you think I would never forgive you, then that would happen. And that's a grave sin. And that's a cardinal sin. Al-fajr al-raji li rahmatillah aqrabu minha. Yani aqrabu ila rahmatillah. He's closer to God's mercy than the one min al-abid. He's a worshiper. But qanat is despondent. His body worship worships, but his soul does not worship. There is a disconnect. al qanat the despondent, is the one that his body moves up and down in recurrent sujood. But the soul is dead. The soul does not interact with the body. Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salatu wassalam says, لا تيأس لذنبك Never ever say that, that I, have, I have committed a sin, a crime that God is not going to forgive me. Never say that. Because God said, I never shut the door of mercy. I never shut it. It's always open. Always open. You always have a chance. You always have an opportunity to go back to him. He never shuts his door at all. So as long as the gate is open, then you have a chance to go back to him and don't give up. And don't say he's not going to listen to me. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَنَبْلُوكُمْ بِالشَّرِّ وَالْخَيْرِ فِتْنَةِ If we give you wealth and health, this is fitna. Fitna means test. If we take it away from you again, it's a test. وَنَبْلُوكُمْ بِالشَّرِّ وَالْخَيْرِ فِتْنَةً وَإِلَيْنَا the Prophet says, God has many ways of testing us. One of them with our children and our wealth. So it will be disclosed. To distinguish between someone who is sakhit, always has bad feeling, always complaining. Always complaining. He would never say thank you. Some people do not know the, the letter thank you, the word thank you. They don't. They are ungrateful, always. Always ungrateful. Even if something ha good happens to them, he says, so what? All people are enjoying this goodness, not just me. So God did not do any favor to me. They don't look at it as a gift. Why? Because they take life for granted. They take God for granted. When we become attached to Madiyat, one of the results, there are many results, one of the results of being attached to this dunya and being fascinated by the dunya and being always concerned about this dunya and the affairs of the dunya, we take dunya for granted. 
We start taking it for granted. And we would never appreciate what God has given us. Never ever. We think that this is his responsibility. Of course he has to pay me. Of course he has to take care of me. Of course he has to, you know, give me children and health and wealth. And this is his duty. This is how we start speaking. We take things for granted. This is the attachment in this dunya. And that is called the greed. And we have seen greed. We have seen it in our countries, in our societies, in our communities. And we have seen the result of the greed. Allahumma ja'al nafsi mutma'innatan biqadarik, radiyatan biqadarik. Radiyatan biqadarik. We have to be content. Content with what God has given us. God has given us more than what we deserve. More than what we deserve. Radiyatan biqadarik, mulia'atan bidhikrika wa du'aik. Shakiratan ala nuzuli bala, sabiratan ala nuzuli balaik. Shakiratan li fawadili na'amaik. I give thanks. I always give thanks to Allah. We must give thanks. Every morning when you open your eyes and you are safe and your family is safe, say Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. This is a new day. At midday, say Alhamdulillah. At the end of the day, even if someone befalls us, our first reaction should be Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. We have to praise Allah and give thanks to Him. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر وصلى الله وسلم على سيدنا محمد وأهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين.